Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Dave here for Dave Outdoors. Uh, today I'd just like to talk about the tutu plant. This thing here. One of New Zealand's most poisonous plants, maybe even the most poisonous. This thing is like lethal. A <laughs> um, couple of stories I'll relate a little bit later. And I've actually got a clipping from another plant, which I'll relate to the tutu plant as well. So this is our tutu plant. There's about three or four different varieties of tutu. The two most common are the tree tutu, which is what I believe this one is. It grows to about eight meters tall, and it's found right throughout New Zealand in the scrub and in the forest. The leaves of the tree, tu the tree tutu, the leaves grow to about three to 10 centimeters long, which is what I think this is. I think this is a young tree. The other most common one is the spreading tutu. It grows to about one meter high. It's more of a shrub. It grows to about one meter high, and the leaves only grow from three to five centimeters long. So this one has quite large leaves already, so I think this one here is probably a, a very young tree tutu. The tree tutu, uh, as I said, the tree tutu is found like right throughout New Zealand, and the, uh, the smaller spreading tutu, the one meter high one, that's found uh, usually south of Wellington. The distinguishing characteristics of the tutu the, for the tree and the spreading tutu is that they're very similar. Uh, they both have opposing leaves like this, directly opposite each other, and they look like mirror images of each other. And the colors on these plants are very, very vivid. It's a very, very pretty plant. Very deep, dark, rich greens, and very bright greens on the stalks. Um, uh, very deceptive. It carries a toxin called tutin. Not a lot of imagination there. The toxin is called tutin, and we call the plant tutu. But everything in this plant is poisonous, except one part. And uh, I'll cover that in just a minute. So again, it's distinguishing characteristics, opposing leaves, um, very vivid, vivid colors on these plants that I've seen in this area, at least. And these stalks, they look like asparagus. That's a very nice, nicely well-formed one there. Another one here couple more there as well. There's about four or five on this individual plant alone. So those are the distinguishing characteristics. In the uh, summer and early autumn or early fall, it'll also produce what look like berries. They, they hang down about, can be about 30 centimeters long and they just hang from the plant and just rows of berries. They almost look sort of like grapes in a way, miniature grapes. They're actually flowers. They're dark purple, but they're actually miniature flowers. They're only about four millimeters across. And uh, of course, none here at the moment. We're just uh, heading into spring. So there's none here at the moment, but summer, uh, early autumn is when you'll see those. I'll get back out here and do another video when they're, um, when they're fruiting, if these are still here. This place here is right next to a road. Uh, this is in the Hanua Ranges, and we're right next to a road. So my guess is the, the park rangers are possibly gonna come through and spray these to kill them, because they are like deadly, deadly uh, plants. Um, we've covered the some of the characteristics, easy to spot. Uh, okay, a couple of stories about the poison, the toxin that's in these. Yep, very, very lethal. Um, these, there's two stories going around. Well, one record and one story. The story is about an elephant eating one of these and dying. So, New Zealand's not well known for its herds of wild elephants out in the bush. So this must have been a circus animal or maybe a zoo animal or something like that. But anyway, there was a plant growing there somewhere around it. It ate it and died. Now, I don't know how much it consumed or anything like that, but these plants can kill elephants. So <laughs> imagine what it can do to us. So it's pretty, pretty lethal. The other record is of a man, you can Google it. The title of the, of the, of the record or his, uh, what he relates is called... I ate tutu or I ate tutu and survived. I ate tutu and survived. That's worth hopping on, um, hopping on Google and having a read of that. I'm just looking up the uh, symptoms here for tutu poisoning. Oh, here we go. So he, what this guy did, this is how toxic it is. What he did is he mistook it for another plant, and we'll cover that in just a moment. He mistook it for another plant. Um, not hard to do and broke off some pieces, took it home, and boiled up the tutu along with some regular vegetables. So the toxin from the tutu came out into the water and got absorbed by the other vegetables. He ate a bit of the tutu, 
uh, the tutu, if I can remember correctly, if I remember his story correctly, he ate a bit of the tutu and it was really foul, which is an indication not to eat it. You know, nature has its warnings. Um, it was really foul, so he, he didn't eat any more, but he ate the rest of the vegetables that had been cooked in the same water. And he got really, really sick. I think, um, I haven't read the story in a while, but he got medical attention pretty quickly. And I think he would have died if he didn't get the medical attention. <laughs> So I ate tutu and survived is the name of that story. But that's how toxic it is. It really is bad. Um, some of the symptoms, I think he, uh, he had most of these, is convulsion, vomiting, exhaustion, coma, and may cause death. Uh, back in the early days, of, uh, the native Maori, their children used to eat, eat these sometimes, my mistake, as kids do. Um, that's why they're dangerous uh, even in the bush today on the on the walks or beside roads like this they're still dangerous because kids can be attracted to them and some of the kids would die from eating the fruit because they mis they mistook it so yeah very very lethal now that guy who got poisoned what he mistook the tutu for was supplejack i cut the supplejack stalk earlier hopefully you can see that and here's the supplejack stalk is the tutu stalk. As you can see it, they look very, very similar. They really do. But the thing with the supplejack, the edible one, this fella here, that you just break this off and eat it, is it's just a long stalk. When you get up to the top of the trees, when this thing reaches the, the, the canopy of the forest, then it can break out into flowers and leaves and that. But generally below the canopy where we have access to it, you just find a long stalk with no leaves on it or anything. So. That's the supplejack, the edible one. It's like a long vine, and at the end of the vine is an edible asparagus-shaped spear. This guy here, this shoot. The tutu, as you see, it's surrounded by its own bush, or surrounded by its own leaves. Although they do look similar, it's quite you know, distinctly different when you have them together. Once again, that's um, a, a, a key issue about uh, plant identification. Even just getting out and going for bushwalks, uh, going for uh, going jogging on your local bush tracks and stuff like that, you see stuff like this around. Just stop and identify the plants. Get used to seeing them, because you know in that survival situation when you're tired, you're hungry, um, probably panicking a bit, or at least the stress levels are up, and you're desperate to put something inside your stomach. It's easy to make the mistake. It's easy to grab the wrong item, and like something like this and stick it on in there. And, and with, with the, uh, your lower resistance, uh, uh, your, lower, your body's weakened, excuse me, your body's weakened state already, it won't take much of this stuff to put you out of the game. So, supplejack in there, and tutu. Yes, no. <coughs> the one edible part of the tutu plant is the juice within the petals of the flower. Those little purple flowers that look like little berries, the juice within their petals is the only edible part. Contained also within those flowers are poisonous seeds. So you know there's no escape from this thing. So you have to be so so careful if you're going to get the juice out of those petals. What people used to do back in the day they get a, a big handful of them and squeeze them out and filter it, kind of filter it through the, through the hands or through the fingers. Open up and then they're left with the seeds and the residue of the petals. I don't think the petals are poisonous. I think they're okay, but the juice I know is okay. Um, they would have the seeds and uh, remnants of the petals on the hand and just sort of discard that. They also used to make um, alcohol from the juice of this plant as well. So. Uh, you know, lots of uses, <laughs> but for me, I just wouldn't go near it. I wouldn't try and harvest it, or no matter how hungry I was, because I know it's just too easy to make a mistake. So even then, those tiny little flowers, there's a poison in there. Even right next to the edible part is a seed that can take you out of the game. So for me, I'll just keep away from it. I don't even like touching it. <laughs> oh, here comes some cyclists. Hey, how's it going? Bit of excitement. So, essentially that's the tutu plant. Nasty little item. Good to keep away from it. And 
as I said before, I think the rangers will probably come through and spray this patch. There's quite a few of them here. They just seem to seem to have sprung up and uh, quite recently. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, if you like this video or you found it helpful, please hit the like button. Um, please put down any comments uh, uh, you have or any ideas or anything you might know about this plant. I try to respond to every single one. And if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks, guys.